I love days like this. What more could you want than to do a television show talking about things you care so much about with two of the people you most respect in the world? It's my day, and I'm just <laughs> glad you could join me. I have with me today on What's New. By the way, good morning. My name is Nancy Nelson. I should start that way. See how excited I get? Barb Walker is here. Barb is from the University of Minnesota Raptor Rehabilitation Program, and... Uh, probably is one of the most famous ladies in the state. Yeah, I mean, I mean she, she's been on television more than all of the rest of us put together. Barb, what are you holding? I'm holding a red-tailed hawk. It's one of the most common soaring hawks in Minnesota, but we get a lot of other kinds of hawks and owls and falcons and eagles at the raptor program at the university. They come in with many types of injuries, and what we do there is treat them and hope to get them back to the wild. The lady sitting on the other side of me is another person familiar to you uh, for a number of reasons, certainly because we love having her on What's New often and consistently, <laughs> Nancy Gibson, Director of Public Relations for the Minnesota Zoo. How mm -hmm. are you? Happy Fine. New Year. Thank you. You too. I'm glad you're here. Who's your friend? Well, I brought, I thought Barb and I would do an education program, <laughs> so I, she's got the predator and I've got the prey, and this is a chinchilla. And he's always squirmy like this, but I'm sure looking over at the hawk doesn't help. That is an absolutely beautiful little creature. And, yes. and you pointed to the fact that we're doing an education feature here. <laughs> in the wild, since the chinchilla is essentially a rodent, yes, am I right? Yes, it, it is a rodent. Right. And this is a bird of prey that right. Barb is holding. This would be something this would right. want to eat. That's right. Well, it's a good, I think it's a good way to show the size, you know, the size of prey that a hawk like that would take. This actually is an a animal from South America. It used to be from South America. It's thought to be extinct in the wild. Hmm. which is very sad, but if you touch this chinchilla, sort of explain it to your I listeners. Know, I know. I, I, there's no way to tell you what it is. It well, is it, so can remarkably hardly, soft. Well, it, this, that's the softest fur in the world. That's 60 hairs per follicle. And when you consider we have one hair per follicle, that's a... Uh, 60 hairs per follicle? Yeah. Does it almost feel like thing. soft air? The red tail is quite interested, too. Yeah. <laughs> she sure is. Are, are the chinchillas prolific breeders? Yeah, no. They're not. No, they're actually they're not. They have about two litters a year, whereas the mice can have quite a few more. But uh, they're only thought to be living in chinchilla farms now, which is unfortunately for fur coats. That, of course, is a sadness that, uh, That's that, why that we extinct. human beings have to uh, face up to. Yes. Uh, so many of the beautiful creatures that we enjoy don't live in the wild or exist in the wild at all anymore because of what we've done to them. Mm -hmm. We killed so many of these to make them into coats yes. that they only exist in captivity now. That's right. But they say about a half a million. But uh, it's, it's very sad. A, a, a man from the United States, an engineer, saved 11 of these and brought them back to the States. And all the ones that we have are from these 11 that he brought back. It took him three years to find them. And that was the turn of the century. Barb, when we talk about extinction and threatened species, of course, the University of Minnesota is so involved in that. The red-tailed hawk that you're holding is not threatened no, or endangered. No, it's not. It's a common species of hawk, but um, as, as predators, they're at the top of the food chain. So the populations of birds of prey as a whole, or from species to species, give us a good indication of what our environment is like. And there are many populations of them that have declined very drastically. Even if they aren't technically endangered, their populations aren't what they should be. This particular red-tailed hawk it remains in captivity at the university. Right. Why? Um, she was originally taken out of a nest when, when she was a young bird, illegally and uh, was rehabilitated after a couple of years of, of working with her, set free, and about two years later, after she'd been free for two years, she was hit by a car, and that's why her wing is hanging low on the left mm -hmm. side, because she was badly injured. So she won't be able to go free again, and we use her in education programs all the time. One of the very special things that you should know about the University Raptor program, if you're one of the two people who hasn't heard us talk about this before, uh, is that, of course, whenever you get an injured bird, you do your very best to get it back into the wild. Right. If that's impossible, they're used for education. Frequently, if they're threatened or endangered, you try to get them into breeding programs, that's and they're right. young go free. Particularly with peregrine falcons and bald eagles, who are, are threatened and endangered. There are a number of, breedy, a number of breeding projects around the country that that have released offspring back to the wild. Mm -hmm. We have some videotape, Barb, that we should let our audience take a look at because the University of Minnesota <coughs> Raptor Program has come to be known as the Raptor, uh, as the uh, Mayo Clinic, rather, for birds. Oh, oh we're not looking at that. We're looking at the zoo. zoo. But we'll stop looking at the zoo right now and we'll let them cue up the other tape that we're interested in looking at. In the meantime, 
we'll take a look at this. It, because you're called the Mayo Clinic for Birds, it means that uh, Dr. Pat Reddig has developed some extraordinary medical procedures right. over there. In anesthesia and surgical methods, he is, is probably uh, known all over the world. We get, we get about, uh, oh, on an average, about 300 year, uh, birds in per year. It's gone over 400 this year. And a number of these birds have, have either been uh, uh, hit by cars or have had some kind of collision injury. They're either caught in leg hole traps or sometimes they're shot. A number of eagles are, are shot or trapped, particularly trapped with, with uh, the bald eagle. We we've see here an operation on a leg that mm -hmm. has just been amputated because of a leg hold trap. We've had 18 bald eagles brought in since October 25th of this year that have been caught in leg hold traps. It's a very serious injury for us to be able to treat. Uh, what they're seeing right now is, is a foot that's dead, essentially, because of uh, having been caught in a leg hold trap. And usually the limb below the trap injury does eventually die and have to either be amputated or, or taken off. The tragedy is, of course, that that as you pointed out, most of the birds that you see are there because of injuries mm -hmm. deliberately caused by human beings. Nobody accidentally sets a trap or accidentally shoots no, an animal they, from the, the sky. Now, now uh, predatory birds are accidentally caught in the traps that are set, in, set for some other animal. The, the animal or the traps are, are, are definitely man set, but not necessarily for a bird of prey. But they do get caught in them and that's what's so unfortunate and it's an injury that's hard for us to treat but we should see them always we urge people to bring any animal or, or bird into us for treatment that has been caught in a leg hole trap because of the seriousness of the injury it may not look bad when someone finds the bird mm -hmm. but it will turn into a bad injury you know there's an irony involved as we talk to the two of you the minnesota zoo houses has successfully bred so many species mm -hmm. that are virtually extinct or threatened with extinction yes. in the wild. Yes. The university raptor program deals with so many birds of prey that are mm -hmm. threatened with extinction. Both of you on a day-to-day -day basis and your projects are threatened with extinction yourself. That's right. There's something very wrong about that. <laughs> yes, I yes. think so too. <laughs> Uh, one of the ways that the population of Minnesota can do something about that is with what has come to be called, as of its institution only last year, the chickadee checkoff, which is something on your tax form and done in cooperation with the Department of Natural Resources. Right. What do we want them to look for? What is that all about? There's a line on, on the um, income tax form that, that states um, or asks if they want to donate part of, of their refund or or money at all. It doesn't have to necessarily be a refund to the non-game program that's part of the Department of Natural Resources. Everyone that does the, that fills out their taxes every year now will be able to donate some money to non-game programs. And the money that's, that goes to the non-game program goes to many projects such as ours at the, at the university to help uh, non-game. And hopefully to the Minnesota Zoo yes, as well. well What's right. nice about that is if you've got a refund coming back of $150, uh, you haven't seen the money yet, you can just put, I'll give $25 on your tax form and you just get $25 less back on your refund mm -hmm. and it becomes a tax deduction yeah. for the following year. Don't know right. the difference. <laughs> right. The chickadee check off, we really yes. encourage you to look at it. We're going to take a commercial message, but before we do, let's take a look at that tape that we so anxiously began before. We'll just listen to the music and look at the animals from the Minnesota Zoo, and then we'll continue. It's a fun take. <laughs>
That Eagle with Barbara Walker hanging on tightly. <laughs> probably became the most famous eagle ever to have been treated at the University of Minnesota Raptor program. She became famous to the nation. This is an appearance last February on stage at Constitution Hall in Washington, D.C. Barb handled her as she was dedicated to the then returned Iranian hostages, to all former prisoners of war, to all of those still listed as missing in action. She, Barb, came into the University Raptor program injured as well, didn't she? Right. She had been found in Iowa with a, a wing injury. She had been shot. Um, and that was the, was last December 31st, as a matter of fact, that we received her. Uh, she was sent up um, by plane to us at the Raptor program for treatment. And about the time that that uh, that we were visited by by uh, Fred Travelina, we she was on her way to recovery, and uh, we, that was <laughs> quite a memorable memorable event for all of us. She was appropriately named Freedom, and I don't imagine there was a wire service or a local newspaper. Uh, that didn't carry uh, a picture of freedom in Washington, D.C., and it was all because the University of Minnesota helped her to stay alive. She was the cool. largest female bald eagle that we'd had in at the program ever. She weighed about 13 and a half pounds, and uh, uh, it was quite difficult to manage her, as a matter of fact. She put up with an awful lot of handling that, that most bald eagles won't tolerate. In fact, that's one of the reasons that I don't have a bald eagle with me today. <laughs> they don't usually put up with that. The reason that we showed you that, not just because Barb and I love to look at it again and again, but because on January 9th, the public is going to be invited to a wonderful event, Nancy, right. it's a in conjunction with the zoo and the raptor program. And the DNR. Department of Natural Resources. Natural Resources, right. What we are doing is uh, designating those January 9th and 10th uh, Bald Eagle Days. And we're starting the program at 10.15 at the zoo with special lectures from uh, Carol Henderson of the DNR and Dr. Pat Reddick and Dr. Gary Duke and Ed Cohn of the zoo. And that'll start at 10.15. And then um, after that, we're inviting the public at 1.30 to join us in Prescott, where we're going to be releasing, I hope, at least five bald eagles. Mm -hmm. Five bald eagles. Yeah, so you can imagine five. the thrill. We saw freedom take off. Now yes. we'll be able to see five. As a matter of fact, just to give you a preview of what you can experience, and we hope you experience it, bring the children, for goodness sakes. Oh, yes. Let's take a look at the tape. Now, you saw Freedom on stage in Washington, D.C. Last February, when she came back to Minnesota, she was released with hundreds of people standing on the bluffs in Prescott, Wisconsin, uh, all to honor her release back to the wild. And this is Freedom just moments, Barb, before she was able to fly free once again. The most rewarding time for us is to be able to see a bird that we have treated for whatever has its injury has been be able to go back to the wild again. And uh, I, there were three or four hundred people at least standing on the bluff watching this particular eagle go free again. I'll tell you, if you've never been close to a bird of this majesty, it, it, it's awesome. And most people haven't. So on January 9th, to have the opportunity to see not one, but five up close first, and then that moment that they leave and mm -hmm. head to the skies is so dramatic. I, I guess one can't explain it, but it is an emotional experience. Oh, it's got to be just fabulous. I'm so freedom, looking forward to January 9th. What they're looking at here is, is freedom right before the, the jesses are being actually cut. The Those jesses are, are leather straps on her legs to prevent her from actually being able to go free when she flaps off of, off of your arm. But those were cut off of her legs and for a minute she didn't know she was free. It was it was very moving to watch her sit there and look around and not realize that, that she actually was free. So many times before when she had tried to fly, the Jesses she held her. Mm -hmm. And it did take her a moment to realize, but watch this. When she did, she left. She didn't look back and say thank you, but that's <laughs> all right. None of the birds that we release ever do that. Uh, <laughs> you know, it is the, I don't think there was a dry real? eye on the no. bluff oh. at Prescott. And look at her soar the skies. Next year is National Year of the Eagle, and it, it's to celebrate the 200th anniversary of our bald eagle. You being were selected. in Washington, D.C., Barb Walker, to mm -hmm. do something very special for this entire nation. You took a bald eagle there yes, just and, recently. and met with senators and representatives and asked them to pass resolutions naming 1982 the National Year of the Eagle right. in honor of that 200th anniversary. That resolution is, is on its way to the president's office now, so it, it should, 
should have no trouble being signed and next year will be proclaimed as National Year of the Eagle. Let mm -hmm. it be known for all that uh, had Barb Walker not been in Washington mm -hmm. appearing at the state at the United States Capitol with her eagle, likely the nation would not have had that resolution. Thank you for that. Thank you. Very much. January 9th, yes, the Eagles come to the go. zoo. 10:15 at the Minnesota so, well, the Zoo. The lectures will start then and then 1:30 in Prescott for the release. And in the meantime, as you start to fill out your income tax reform forms, please look for the chickadee checkoff. Mm -hmm. You can donate money that will help to save a lot of species, perhaps right. at the raptor program. I think there's 290 the species that actually helps. And uh, I don't think most people realize that bald eagles, we have this, the second largest population of bald eagles in the United States. Alaska has the first. So we're really quite fortunate. Mm -hmm to have that many nesting bald eagles and let's keep them that way. Yes. In the meantime, you can write the Raptor program at the University of Minnesota Department of Veterinary Medicine and become a sponsoring member. Of course, you can become a member of the Minnesota Zoo, visit them all winter long, do your cross-country skiing, and uh, just continue to care about the creatures that inhabit this earth with us. Nancy Gibson and Barb Walker sure do. We're lucky we have you, too. <laughs> We're lucky we We're have lucky you. Nice <laughs> to see you. To help Thank us you publicize all of that. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. We'll be back. Stay with us.